You're very welcome back. Now, do you still not know what a tracker mortgage is? Tommy doesn't. No. Whether you're about to come a third, become a third level student or you're entering in the world of work, one of the hardest parts of becoming a responsible adult is knowing just how to deal with money and finance. Yes, indeed. Financial planner Paul Merriman is here to give his advice to young people and their parents on all things financial because it's so topical at the moment. Mm. Leaving cert just out of the way, people looking towards college, looking towards growing up life, got to open a bank account. Where do you start? Yeah, OK, great question. So when it comes to bank accounts, uh, from students' point of view, come August this year, an awful lot of banks are going to come out with different offers. Uh, so when we could when we have free money in your account when you open an account. The biggest tip, I suppose, for students around this time is pick a current account you want to stick with for a long time. Because, generally speaking, once you're in a bank, you stay with that bank mm. for maybe 10, 15, 20 years. Not many people switch these days. So that's probably the biggest tip I could probably say. Check out exactly what the offers are when you're not a student. Um, I suppose on top of that, one thing to consider for students would be when they're opening bank accounts especially, would be there's a couple of banks, AIB, sorry, Ulster Bank and KBC at the moment offer Android Pay and Apple Pay. That's really big Very for handy. students, yeah, because they're going to be looking to pay that way. Uh, so that's a big tip for students as well, to maybe look out for those two banks when it comes around to August, September. Interesting that the banks are thinking like that, isn't yeah. it? They're, mm. they're, they're the futuristic brands. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the, uh, what, it, what is the ad? I'm not going to name the bank, but it's, you know, when you start making it, so do so we. Do they we. really want to get yeah, people in, new, don't they? Yeah, get them in early. As well as you get students in, like I said, they're going to stay there for 10, 15, maybe 20 years. So it's a big, uh, it's a, it's a big deal. Last year, KBC them. offered a hundred euro free when students opened an account. Yes, yes, they offered last year. hundred euro is a nice incentive. Absolutely, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. On book, spend on books yeah. Yeah. in the first term. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what do you need the money for, books? What books, yeah, that's the, that's the application for. Uh, no, fairness, when it comes to KBC, that was a good offer. Uh, not all the shoes will be attracted to that. Uh, mm. and again, KBC are a cashless bank now. Uh, most banks are moving that way. Uh, which is really handy for students. But like I so said, keep an eye on that Apple Pay and the Android Pay. That's going to be a big thing in the future. But and is it fair to say, Paul, every student should be benefiting from free banking? They should be. I mean, there's a very good website, the CP ccpc.ie, uh, which is the Consumer and Customer Protection uh, Comparison site. And that kind of lets students go on and have a look at all different types of bank accounts that are on offer. Uh, so it makes sure students maybe click on there before they go anywhere as well to get mm. a good comparison tool. Free banking is really, really easy achievable because the banks will offer free banking to new customers. Mm -hmm. So if you're quite clever and you move around every few years, you're going to pick up yeah. free banking offers all the time. So students should be doing that. Now, the next one you're going to talk about is what I would say would be a holy grail for students, an interest-free overdraft. Yeah, is I mean, that accessible yeah, for students? Yeah, it is accessible. It's, it's slightly, it's, it's slightly skewed, I suppose. It, it's there. Uh, some of the banks are a little bit cagey on their, on their offering to students on overdraft facilities. Mm. Uh, and they really need to be careful. Them, understandably yeah. so. Yeah, and I suppose for any students out there, I would probably be against overdraft facilities. Right. Uh, because you should really be trying to stay away from getting into debt. Uh, especially at that young age. Mm. If you started that habit at 18, 19, 20, you're going to continue it right the way through uh, your adult life. I have to uh, admit, as a good. student, I wouldn't have even been aware I of... I wouldn't be uh, aware of an option. I'd certainly be aware of going into... Um, over, over being overdrawn and getting referral fees and getting oh yeah. definitely yeah, yeah. yes yeah. They're, but they're not having big no -no. that facility yeah yeah no they'd be a big no no I wouldn't be into mm. the overdraw. they're available in some banks but again it's kind of uh, stay away from the students yeah try not to go into debt yeah but maybe if things are a little bit tight if better have a, a, tight, some, yeah. a pre arranged a issue rather than than, than doing that um, should students get credit cards absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my, my opinion. Anyway, uh, I think there's this, Mr. Owen, out there that when students need to create a credit score for themselves, so I know we've heard this before, people saying, get a credit card, pay it off monthly, and when you go for a mortgage or car loan, you've got a credit rating. That's not true. Mm. Uh, in my, my opinion, students are better off saving a small amount every week or every month. So even 25 quid a week, 100 quid a week, saving that creates a way better credit uh, facility with a bank than having a credit card. And once a credit card is there, it's very easy to fall into maybe mm -hmm. a missed payment here and a missed payment there. I suppose when a student gets into that kind of situation, they're going to have a bad credit rating. When they leave, when they leave college and they try to get into maybe a car loan or maybe a mortgage further down the line, that's going to come back that's and haunt sure. them. So I always stay, stay clear of them. As well, years ago, uh, I suppose when, when I was going through college, I would have took a credit card because we needed them back then. But now debit cards are available. So a debit mm -hmm. card comes straight out of your you account. Can do everything so you can book you. your cinema tickets or you can pay for flights or whatever on your debit card now anyway, where years ago, I suppose... You really need yeah. a credit card because you couldn't do it on anything else. Yeah, and a lot of this is for parents as well who are going to be watching. And you know, little Johnny might say, "Well, I need a credit card, you know. I yeah. need, need yeah, to have it no, up there." Little Johnny, you don't. You need a debit yeah. card with money in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to get a job. For parents or anyone with a credit card, Paul, um, what kind of an APR should we be getting on our account? Well, I suppose it varies from bank to bank. As always, there's a few offers out there that some banks will give you free introductory for six months on purchases, uh, which are quite good. Again, that CCPC website, uh, CCPC.ie, uh, is a very good website to go and track 
for everything, uh, rather than naming one or two banks on, li on the telly today, we'll just refer everyone to the mm. CPC website. I suppose when it comes to them, anywhere for students as well, it's kind of anywhere from 18 to 35 percent. That's a huge difference. So shopping around and making sure you do your homework uh, for students, excuse the pun, but if you do your homework and shop around, you're going to be able to get maybe an 18 percent rather than 35. Huge difference Big in difference. interest. Gigantic yeah. difference. Big difference. So again, make sure you do uh, your homework on your finances before you sign up to anything with any institute. Yeah. What about student loans, uh, Paul? I mean, it's going to be it's going to be something a lot of people will, will look into. To, Maybe parents will look into in in, in you know, collaboration with, with with the students something to yeah. get them through. You know, what is a very expensive couple of years. Again, yeah. most of the banks will offer student loans. Uh, and my own uh, kind of advice would be for parents and students maybe look towards the credit union as well. Credit okay. union is great for student loans, and they're really accommodating for parents and for students. And uh, probably my biggest tip I could say: getting a credit union account really young for your kids. So when it comes to that age of 18, 19, they're looking for a bit of borrowing for student loans to be really, really well uh, catered for. Some of the banks have free introductory offers again, where you'd have uh, interest-free periods on loans, you can roll up the loans, the interest for maybe a year or two down the line. Uh, so like I said, all in all, again, yeah. uh, they're, they're, they're out there and they're available for students. You have a couple of tips for us as well. Uh, and uh, you know, if, you're, if, if I was a student, somebody said to me, you've got to start your pension, I might have rolled my eyes, but <laughs> it's boring, it's long-term future, but yeah. it's very damn, practical, damn isn't sensible, it? Yeah, isn't it? I mean, if, 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 if crack and figure here for you, like save 20% out of every paycheck would probably one of the biggest tips I could give to somebody. It's a really good habit to start really young. Uh, so again, when you get out of college and you start earning money, mm. you can put 20% aside, so you're going to be way better that's off. A, that's a fair chunk now of, of yeah. you know, your first gig. Yeah, is it though, really? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, it depends on what you're earning, I suppose. Well but again, <laughs> very good. I'm just no, thinking I'm just back. Saying, In fact, it's a fair yeah. chunk now. Never yeah, it's mind a fair chunk now. But I suppose students shouldn't have made, made major loans again, you know. So it's about being smart with your money, not having big borrowings out there. So if you don't have big borrowings, once you get out of college and you start getting mortgages and car loans and yeah. overdrafts and all this sort of stuff, then it's harder. So if you start younger, it's much easier to do it. Uh, so like I said, students shouldn't really typically have an awful lot going out. They tend to spend everything so just kind of keep 20% is a really good side. You mentioned the pension, uh, the pension a really good one. Uh, if a student puts 25, someone 18 years of age puts 25 euro a week into a pension for life for age 68 years of age, you have 350,000 their pension fund until they get 65. And that's a phenomenal amount of money, mm. uh, you know, and that's really, really good. If you were someone 35 or 40 years of age starting off, you want to be putting 500 a month aside to try and get those same figures. And, and, and young people watching, thinking that'll never be me. Never it, be will. Me. it will yeah. come, it will happen. Paul, thanks yeah. for joining us this no morning. Problem. It's great advice there this morning. Cheers.